This is part one of Understanding Academic Integrity. This PowerPoint was adapted from the T. Denny School of Social and Family Dynamics. In this presentation, we will review student responsibilities, violations of academic integrity, sanctions for academic dishonesty, plagiarism, and tips for avoiding plagiarism. In the next presentation, you will discuss academic deceit, implications for the workplace, and you will be provided with additional resources. According to ASU's Student Academic Integrity Policy, students are expected to act with honesty and integrity and respect the rights of others in carrying out all academic assignments. You can visit the Provost's website and learn more about academic integrity by clicking on the link below. There are several different violations to academic integrity here at ASU. Some of them, but not all, include cheating on an academic evaluation or assignment, plagiarizing, academic deceit, such as fabricating data or information, aiding academic integrity policy violations and inappropriate collaborating with peers, and falsifying academic records. For more details about this, you can follow the link below. There are several consequences to violations of academic integrity or being academically dishonest. These sanctions include a reduced or failing grade for an assignment, a reduced or failing grade for an evaluation, a reduced or failing grade for a course, you may be asked to engage in community service. For an extreme offense, you may receive an XE on your transcript. Other consequences could include withdrawal of credit for a previous course or requirement if you had falsified documents and it was later found out, or removal from a school, college, major, or program of study permanently. As you can see, there are some pretty severe consequences for violations to academic integrity. Now we're going to talk about one particular type of academic dishonesty, plagiarism. What exactly is plagiarism? Plagiarism means using another's words, ideas, materials, or work without proper acknowledgement or citation. At ASU and in the workplace, students and employees are expected to understand when they're taking someone else's words rather than using their own. You're students and you're learning these things, so if you're ever in doubt, you can always contact your instructor for clarification or assistance. There are also librarians and the Writing Center that can provide additional support to you as you're writing your papers. Now we are going to explore plagiarism further. We're going to talk about some of the different ways that plagiarism can occur. Plagiarism occurs when students copy work from another source and present it as their own. They do not properly acknowledge and document original sources. They do not understand how to properly cite an original document. Or they may not understand when quotation marks are required. Any time that you take direct language that's not your own, you need to place that information into quotation marks. You also need to provide a citation with an author's name and date and page number. Your instructor in this course can help you understand exactly how to quote any copied materials so that you don't end up in violation of academic integrity. Additional ways that plagiarism can occur is when a student or students may copy online materials and present it as their own. Additionally, if you use another student's work and present it as your own, such as collaborating on a paper, borrowing aspects of a previous student's project, or borrowing or copying pieces of another student's discussion forum post. Additionally, if you were to pay or barter someone to complete your assignment and present it as your own, this would be a form of plagiarism. There could be additional consequences to this type of behavior as well. Additionally, if you don't allow sufficient time to complete assignments, you may make poor choices and end up copying inadvertently without meaning to. Over the next several slides, we will explore plagiarism more thoroughly. 
you will be presented with a series of examples in which a student either committed plagiarism or did not commit plagiarism. Consider this first example. This sentence includes exact wording from an original source. Now notice what the student included in his or her paper. You can see in red that the student included the exact same sentence in his or her work. However, what you notice is that the student did not include a citation. The student did not include quotation marks and did not include the source in which he or she pulled this sentence. The student submitted this work as his or her own, and students are responsible for the work they submit. This student, despite saying that he or she forgot to put it in their own words or include a citation, committed plagiarism. Consider this next example. Take a moment to read the original sentence. Next, notice what the student wrote. You can see in red that the student included the exact same sentence from the original work in his or her paper. The student also included the author's name and the date of publication. However, the student did not include the sentence in quotation marks. And without quotation marks, the student passed this off as his or her own work. Now, the student also did not include a page number. And so without a page number and quotation mark, again, it would be hard to find where the student took this particular sentence and it conveys the message that the student copied an original work and passed it off as his or her own. Consider the next example. This example is a little bit trickier. The student cites the Bureau of Labor Statistics in parentheses after a sentence about a statistic on average hourly earnings. Now, because the student didn't write this particular sentence, this is a form of plagiarism. The student would have needed to cite in quotation marks with a page number this particular sentence. Instead, it reads as if the student wrote the sentence, which is not true. This is an example of plagiarism. Now consider the following example. In this example, a student wanted to provide some information about a particular job that was discussed in the content on the Bureau of Labor Statistics website. In this particular example, the student changed minimal information surrounding the main content about this particular job. You can see the overlap in red of where the student copied directly from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now, the student did include a citation about the Bureau of Labor Statistics, but failed to include this content in quotation marks or to provide a page number. So this sentence reads as if it's the student's original work, when in fact it is not. This is an example of plagiarism. This is something you're going to want to be very careful about because for one of your class projects, you may be asked to research some jobs and to discuss the skills that are involved in those jobs, what you do, how much you make. These are going to be times when you're going to want to cite with quotation marks any direct information that you take. You're going to also want to make sure that you can explain in your own words about these jobs. That will help convey that you truly understand what is necessary in these particular jobs. We have been talking about several examples in which students have committed plagiarism. In this example, you can see that the student accurately cited the statement that he or she pulled from an original source. This student included the author's name, the date of publication, and a page number. This student also included quotation marks around the exact content that he or she copied. This is a proper citation, and this student did not commit plagiarism. Consider this next example. Mark is retaking a course. The first time he took the course, he completed many of the assignments, and he believes he'll just submit those assignments again now that he's enrolled in the course for a second semester. On a particular paper, he submits the same paper he had submitted previously to this assignment. The assignment happens to be the same. The plagiarism checking software reports a 100% match, and Mark is in jeopardy 
of academic dishonesty sanctions because he did not submit his own work for its originally intended purpose. Now, although Mark wrote the original paper, it wasn't intended for this particular course. It was intended for the first course that he took. And although the course descriptions and the names and perhaps even the instructor were the same, it was a different semester. It was a different course. What Mark should have done is he should have contacted his instructor before he submitted the paper. His instructor could have helped him understand whether or not he needed to rewrite the paper, whether or not he could do an alternate assignment, or at least understand the importance of why he wouldn't be able to submit the same paper twice. Now, permission from an instructor is necessary in order to avoid some of these academic sanctions. It doesn't mean that if you talk to your instructor, the instructor will allow you to submit something previous, but at least the instructor will be able to open a dialogue with you and help you understand the importance and the consequences of such behavior. This next example is pretty similar to the last example. Let's look at where it may be a bit different. Mary wrote a paper for a course and received a good grade on it. She has a very similar assignment in another course. Mary decides to submit the paper from the first course to meet the requirements of her present course. The plagiarism software reports a high degree of overlap between the past and the present paper. Now, in this instance, Mary could also be charged with academic dishonesty and is at risk for academic sanctions. Because again, Mary wrote a paper and she failed to submit the original work for its original intended purpose. She got a grade for a paper in a different class and she resubmitted it for her current class. This didn't show that she had understood that the classes were different or that she had written original work for the new assignment. What Mary should have done again is to ask her instructor for permission. She may have said to her instructor that she had a similar assignment in another class and the instructor could have helped her maybe to create an alternate assignment or perhaps to get permission to submit this assignment, even with some modifications to her current class. Mary should have talked to her instructor. Let's consider this next example. It's a bit different. In this example, we're going to talk about discussion forum posts. Consider this. Maria's friend Tia had taken a course in a previous session. Tia shares her responses to the discussion forums with her friend Maria. Maria then submits Tia's work as her own in a discussion forum. In this particular instance, both students are in violation of academic dishonesty and at risk for academic sanctions. Maria failed to submit original work for an assignment. Tia, on the other hand, aided an academic integrity policy violation by providing her work. Even though perhaps the language was slightly altered, this is considered academic dishonesty because it was not original work. And in online courses, this is often very quickly noticed by TAs and instructors who grade across multiple sections and collaborate with other instructors. They may notice things that sound the same. They may be able to do quick searches online. And so this can be a problem in online discussion forums. It's really important to submit original work. Let's consider one final example regarding discussion forums. In this example, Van has read through his peers' discussion forum posts and decides that he likes their ideas and how they worded their statements. Now, perhaps he didn't have time to do the assignment, but he must post a response. Perhaps he didn't finish the readings and he needs to get this done quickly. Van decides to take parts of other students' posts to create his own posts. He uses different quotes from his peers to support his own points. Van could be charged with academic dishonesty and is at risk for sanctions because Van failed to submit original work for an assignment. He used other students' work and falsely represented it as his own. And although he maybe altered some of the language, he was still in violation because it wasn't his original work. And again, this is often brought to the attention of instructors by either other students or TAs who may grade across multiple sections. Now let's consider another example. 